Apparently we're live. So um, question for you today, how do you run a business with a remote workforce? Uh, for many people, that will be a workforce of one. Um, but if you're a business which has multiple employees and you're now forced to work, uh, have them work from home, um, this may be something new for you. Uh, it may be a challenge. Now, for me, over the last, I can't remember how many years, well before all the wonderful cloud computing ever existed, uh, I was able to work from a plane train automobile. I mean, I'll go back as early as um, late 80s, and to think for a second, late 80s, and you know, we were using faxing online and we we're using uh, email wasn't quite like the email today because the internet only came out as a commercial thing back in uh, 93, 94. Um, but we had a, an email system. In fact, CompuServe was around before then. Uh, so I've had a lot of time, you know, early CompuServe days. So once you know, CompuServe became bought, they were bought by AOL. But like I said, they predated the uh, the modern day internet, which was the commercial internet, which came out uh, in the early 90s. And uh, I had a lot of time to get accustomed with working in an online environment. Now, in all fairness, over time, that has been something which has also um, dogged me a bit because um, I've had prospects and, and clients alike who have been critical of the facts, you know, if I've been, you know, if I've been in my home city at the time, oh, you know, let's get together for a coffee. I'm like, well, dude, I'm not necessarily going to travel an hour to meet you for a half hour coffee as much as I like you. Um, you know, if if it were to suit with the agenda, it's great. But if it's not, then I'm taking more than a half hour out of my time. And I wouldn't expect you to take more than a half hour out of your time and, you know, an extra hour of what it to come and travel to me. So it has been something which has also dogged me in the sense that people over time have been super critical of um, my desire to be able to work remotely. I love getting, don't get me wrong, I'm not a hermit just because I'm a Queenslander and the, um, the old saying is we Queenslanders, we hate everybody. It's not entirely true. We're a very gregarious bunch, and and so am I. You know, um, I'm that introvert and extrovert. My wife calls me the networking slut. Um, I love meeting people. I love getting to know people. It's just that um, the one asset. It's, it's it's almost cliched to say it these days, but the one asset we we have, which is the most valuable, is our time. Um, and if you don't respect that asset. Um, you know, then you are going to have to earn whatever it is you need to earn in a shorter amount of that particular resource. So um, working online can make you more productive, but it also comes with some pitfalls. It comes with the uh, self-discipline to actually get stuff done, not, you know, you're working at home and, well, you know, uh, the coffee machine, the toilet, the whatever, let's just go grab a bicky or whatever. So all these things that you wouldn't do at work that you potentially will now do when you're working at home. And now I'm going to translate that to your business owner and you have a workforce, whether it's five or 55 people or 50,000 people, uh, and they're working at home, you've got to, you know, you, they will go off and do what they are going to go and do. So how do you go and manage that? Well, I can't, and well, I'm not going to answer that in this one particular Facebook Live. However, we can get into that. Uh, we can get into that another time. We can get into that in some one-on-one -on -one and some group stuff that we're going to do and um, moving forward. You know, I'm, I'm just going to keep delivering um, stuff from my experiences over the last 30 plus years um, if you if you find them valuable, fantastic. If you want to get more of them, then just subscribe to wherever you see this, whether that's YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, or whatever. Um, this is, of course, going out on Facebook Live. There'll be a recording of it on um, on YouTube and whatever. So wherever you see me, and if you want to get more of it, just subscribe. But if you want to get some one-on-one -on -one stuff, then let's have a chat. So I'm just going to keep doing stuff that I've been doing. Uh, it's the best way I can I know to help people who are in business who are having to do this transition. And so it's a, it's a challenging transition. So one of the key things is going to be, of, besides having a decent internet connection and a computer that works or a phone or something, uh, because there's so much you can do on your phone these days, um, is having systems, obviously. 
um, having cloud-based systems and having systems that work with each other. The biggest challenge I've found over the years of working with people is knowing how to, it's, sorry, firstly, instilling in them the sense of um, belonging and ownership that you have, you know, when you're in an office uh, and you have your group of people there, irrespective of how they feel about you and how they feel about the company, and hopefully they, they feel, you know, really enthusiastic about you and really enthusiastic and passionate about the company. But let's be honest, there are a lot of people who don't hire based on values. They hire based on skills and they end up with employees of varying degrees of, of passion and engagement. So, um, you know, even if you have those employees who don't necessarily feel connected to the company, once you get them in the office environment, you have a couple of psychological things at play. You have the whole peer group pressure. If it's a if there's an overwhelming or a legion, at least a majority of the uh, the people in the organisation who have a positive outlook on the company, then that that can um, have a positive impact on even those people who aren't exactly uh, uh, thrilled about the company. At least positive in the sense that they will toe the line, they will do what they need to be that needs to be done. Uh, also, because they're now in an environment with everybody, there's another psychological trigger that happens where people. Um, you know, they feel part of a community, part of a tribe because they're in that same location. Now, remote working, get this, by the way, if you're a business owner especially, remote working is not going to be for everybody. And um, during this whole COVID-19 thing, uh, you know, if you're watching it during that, if you're watching it later on, well, it may no longer be valid, but that part, you know, the whole rest will probably be valid. But remote working is not going to be valid for everybody. It's not going to be work, not going to be workable for everyone, not all the same. Um, some people will have that strong need for community and your challenge as a business owner or a team leader or, or business leader, whatever it is you do, is going to be in creating that sense of community, creating that sense of connectivity, that connected, not even, sorry, not connectivity, that sense of connectedness, that belongingness of people uh, in a tribe, in a community, in a movement, whatever it is you are looking to to create. So um, there are various ways you can do it. Now, as I said, internet connection, computer, phone, whatever is a, is a key thing. And unfortunately, as you're probably seeing on this recording, I'm sure that the, the quality of the recording is sometimes uh, a little bit jittery, even though I have five bars on my thing and you know, super fast internet connection going at 20 meg per second upload, whatever. Uh, there may be some glitches and not everyone's going to have great internet and people who are not necessarily great at um, working remotely quite often are not great at technology and they can get really, really frustrated. So do your best to find platforms. Zoom is a really good platform, by the way. Um, I think everyone knows that. No, I'm not affiliated with Zoom. I used to love Hangouts from Google, but not so keen on it these days. It seems to be a little bit more glitchy. Skype is Microsoft, so I stay away from that. Sorry, I'm not endorsing or unendorsing Microsoft. It's just not my thing, but just find a platform that works for you and ideally a platform that plugs into whatever systems you have and um, look into what um, what is going to be the easiest for your users to use and which is going to allow you standardization. Yeah. Um, over the next weeks, months, I'm going to be sharing a whole bunch of stuff which has to do with how to work remotely and how to get the most productivity out of people. It's, uh, from, from my experience, I've been able to work from a plane, train, automobile for most of my life. Um, and um, it's the, the key thing I've found from that is, apart from having the systems or the rest of it, is the self-discipline. So as a business owner, one, the basic technical infrastructure your people are going to need to have. Number two, you're going to need to be able to create that sense of connectedness, whether you consider your business family as a family, a tribe, a community, a movement, or whatever it is you consider them. Your your one of your key challenges is to create and maintain a high level of connectedness with your people. Um, that will go so far to keep them, I don't want to say not, not so much inspired, but will keep them engaged to a point where they will work at a reasonable level. However, you're not able to be with them all the time. And in an office, you're not with them all the time either. However, there's someone around all the time in an office, and that's not going to happen 
in a remote environment. Um, yes, you know, you can have your, your, you know, some practical things about it being connected is how you communicate, whether you have uh, regular catch-ups via video, whether there's an open channel people can hop in and out of. You know, this is a, there's some great tools out there, by the way, just letting, you know, where you can have an open channel, people can just keep jumping in and out to see. It's like coming around the water cooler. It's the virtual water cooler idea where uh, they can grab their cup of coffee or they can grab their water. Um, and um, I might have a drink of that while I'm at it, actually. Uh, they can come into a virtual room and just see who's there and chat while they're having some time off uh, from whatever it is they're doing. Like they would normally go in the water cooler, go to the toilet, whatever. So because, again, in the office there are people around and there are water coolers and coffee machines and whatever to go to. And remotely, when you want to get a water or a coffee or whatever, well, there's no one else around. Um, so you can have your, your daily meetings and your daily catch up calls and you might want to increase the frequency, increase the frequency, but reduce the duration and make them even more efficient and effective, which will later on help you down the track. When you go back to bricks and mortar, if you ever go back to bricks and mortar, it'll help you in terms of getting more efficient with your meetings and all the rest of it. And so, um, in, in terms of engaging with people, get your people, um, connecting with you more frequently but for a shorter duration and create spaces for them to go and um, to go and connect with others in some sort of virtual room, which is just always open. Um, and even after, even after hours, you know, just create a space where people can go and reach out to their colleagues and become more connected with, have that connectedness with, with their colleagues. Um, so as I said, technology engagement through connectedness, but now, you know, they go off and, they're supposed to be doing their work. And unless they are really, really highly self-motivated, how do you, how do you keep them, um, how do you keep them doing or operating at their, at their optimum performance? And there's no, <laughs> there's no short answer I've found for this. Uh, it does come down, at least from my experience, it comes down to how well, um they feel that they, their values and their goals and their ambitions are being delivered by the company now right now a lot of people are just going to be working from home and grateful to have a damn job don't take that for granted do not take that for granted um yeah you as a business owner or a budget responsible business leader or whatever it is you are um you know sure i get that you're under the pump you know i get that you know, possibly you're under the pump you know? Maybe you've got squillions in the back of you, you don't have to worry. But if you're like the greater majority of people, you're going to be feeling a little bit of pressure at the very least about where the future is, at least for the next 12 months, maybe two years until all this sort of calms down, the curve gets flattened or whatever. Um, and there'll be a lot of people, your employees, your team, whoever, who are extremely nervous about the future. And your role is to ensure that they don't get more nervous because if they're going to get nervous, they're not going to do their work, right? And you want them doing your, their work. Otherwise, your business will grind to a halt faster than it may grind to a halt. And ideally, it won't grind to a halt at all. So, um, I was going? So, people will be nervous about, their, about the future employment. Give them, give them whatever level of comfort you can give them. But, and, and at the same time, a lot of people will just be grateful to have a job. So as I said, don't take that for granted. Respect that, honour that. Um, uh, you know, this is not a question of getting down your knees and grovelling. It's a question of just honouring the fact that they are grateful to be in a job and recognise that. Recognise them for, you know, what they're doing, right? They're being forced to work remote, right? There's all this other scary stuff out there and they're being forced to work remotely um, some of them love will love this, by the way. Some will be like, yeah, hey, cool. Always wanted to do this, but they're with that group of people who won't, you know, they'll, and they'll be the ones in between. Um, so they're being, they're being now moved into an environment they're not familiar with, they're not comfortable with. And forget that you're not comfortable with it necessarily as a business owner. Um, suck it up for a moment, right? Just really suck it up and put yourself, like we have to put ourselves in the shoes of our clients, put yourselves in the shoes of your employees, of your staff. And understand that they, they, they have these things going on in their head and they, some of them will ideally just rather be in, in an office. So 
um, acknowledge the fact that they are doing a phenomenal job. Um, be fair, obviously, if they're not doing a great job, then be fair and, and, and uh, mentor them through the challenges that they're facing. Be more alert to um, the challenges that your people have. And it may be that you don't have, you know, maybe you do have the skills to mentor them through, maybe you don't. Um, quite frankly, I find quite, uh, often that that mentoring role is really just being um, a, a mate with a bit more leadership vision. Um, there are some other skills that you know come quite in handy. So if you don't have the skills, then, then reach out. You know, maybe I can um, I can share some stuff with you that will, will help you to um, to provide that that buffer that your your employees, your staff, your team need been there done that so many times so um acknowledge them for what they're doing acknowledge them for the awesome job they're doing of actually going and working remotely and still keeping productive um your you know one of your jobs that you're going to take on whether you do it yourself or you get someone else to assist you in it or whatever is a new form of marketing you know it's a new it's an internal marketing that you've never you may never have done before it may just be an extension of what you've done for if you've never done if you've never been consider what you do as an internal marketing job in terms of you know um engaging with your your people to a degree which keeps which keeps them coming back for more and wanting to come back for more and wanting to come to, to work just not just because you're giving them a paycheck but because they love what they're doing and they love the environment they work with and they love working with you and they love working for you as their boss um get into that role now um and i'm not saying out, go out and do a coaching job coaching course but get into the role of um of a a mentor or coach to your people um and find the leaders with if you know if you have a big department of 500 people or 5,000 people you know then it, well, you'll naturally if you have 500 or 5,000 people you'll naturally have people who, who, who deal with the smaller groups and you'll deal with your your main leaders but if you are a business owner let's say with 20 30 40 50 years yeah, sure you'll have to the department heads but maybe you've never actually had to deal with um this sort of situation and so it's now time for you to step up and find the leaders within your business and train them um or go to the, the department heads within your business uh or create that if you don't have it and train them to be the coaches you need to coach them and then they need to amplify that and if you don't or mentor them and they need to mean they need to amplify or, or not amplify wrong word um they need to um replicate that to their people down line cross line whichever way you want to see it flat flat organization not hierarchical anyway um yeah listen we're pushing 18 minutes now so i'm going to keep coming back with more of this sort of stuff and uh, how to grow your business in especially in this this challenging time if there's anything you'd like to know specifically just pm me wherever you see this leave a note in the comments or just pm me with a uh email or, or or just a message or whatever i'd be more than happy to either jump on a call with you one-on-one -on -one and and have a chat or and see how i might be able to help you or uh we can cover it in a video like this and maybe you want to come on and we can have a discussion about um you know about your specific needs about your specific situation because your situation there'll be a degree of it which is unique but it'll also be there will be some common stuff which other people will be experiencing and you'll be able to help them so through your what i'm hoping to do here is um help people through the experiences i've had over 30 years in business across the various countries and, and, and continents um and if we can do the same through exposing people to your experiences uh and you know working through that on on a call then um they may get helped as well and uh, together uh globally as business owners business people we can make a huge difference in keeping this world economically running let's leave the uh, government and the health organizations to take care of the, the health side of it we take care of the business and we all as humans and beings and on this planet we all take care of the health side of it by doing what is responsible but anyway enough of that for now have a great day. Thanks very much for tuning in and I will um, see you again soon. Bye now.